This is arguably my favorite fight on this card. We have it at lightweight between a couple of bangers. Scott Hot Sauce Holtzman. Boy, it's hot. Taking on Mateusz Gamer Gamrot. And listen, from the former KSW double champ at featherweight and lightweight, Mateusz Gamrot's been there and done that. My favorite win on his record. Maybe the Claiber Quique Arabs fight, but he's got three of them against Norman Park. Two wins, one and no contest. The last one, really just straight up all of them. Tons of bad blood. I mean, Norman Park usually brings it, but if you go and watch him, I mean, Mateusz Gamrot, the striking is there. He can really put on an insane amount of pressure. He can throw a ton of volume. He's got a bit of power in his hands. We saw him really kind of exposed against Guram Kotataladze in his last fight where maybe some of those wars have taken over. This guy that was 17-0 coming into the UFC and that was his only taste of defeat in pro mixed martial arts was against Kotataladze. And it wasn't that long ago. But if you want to be specific, you go back and watch it. Kutataladze definitely won the first two. He's coming in on relatively short notice. It was originally supposed to be Magomed Mustafayev, which I hope we get someday. But in the third round, Gamrot changed it up. He made that adjustment where, yes, when I'm in Southpaw, I might be looking more for the takedown. When I'm in Orthodox, I'm going to strike. He went straight for the takedowns and the grappling, and that was where he shone. And if you look at it, I mean, this is a guy that was a European ADCC grappling champ. He has a loss in grappling 2019 to Gary Tonin, seven minutes, rear naked choke. No shame in that. I love the grappling out of Gamrot. I love the complete game out of him. For Scott Hot Sauce Holtzman, other than the uh, heartbeat Dustin Poirier's Louisiana style that I have, this is a guy that spent four years at the University of Tennessee. Was he... Cow tipping? Was he bull roping? Balling. Nope. Not balling. He was playing hockey. And if there's anything I like, it's playing hockey. And this is a guy that also had a pro roller hockey career, which I've considered at points in my life. Now, low points. I gotta, low points. I'm just going to let this out there. If you say he plays hockey, it makes him sound pretty tough. If you end that statement by saying he then played roller hockey, it takes away all the coolness of him playing college hockey. Still pretty cool. But if for Scott Hot Sauce Holtzman... Hockey player, and you don't hear of a lot of hockey players from Knoxville, Tennessee, but this is a guy that spent time at Jim O. Now, I have to say, like a lot of fighters on this card, he has switched gyms, and I'll get into it a little bit later on, but I love this matchup. Two really all-action type of guys here. This is a really good fight for Mateusz Gamera to really figure out how good he is and to see if he did leave too much of himself in KSW. It's my whole Thomas Almeida theory where you get into so many wars before you get to the UFC. Trying to get the UFC to acknowledge you. You have all these crazy fights. And when they finally acknowledge you... You left too much of your gas in those sort of... I'm not going to call KSW a lesser promotion, but just not in the UFC. And for Gamrat, he did have a lot of crazy fights before he came over. And you look at that Guron fight. I think Guron Katasalaze is a handful for anyone at 155. What do you think about Paddy Pimblett's chances against him? I don't like them at all, if I'm being very honest. But... The fact that Gamrot was able to eat his best shots. Did he go down? Yes, he did. He was dropped in that fight. And it was weird when you look at that. Because it will kind of play into the maybe Gamrot could be slightly, maybe a little chinny. I don't know. Because if you look at the shots that Kutatalaze lands on him, to drop him at least, he lands a lot of clean shots. But they're not the hardest shots. They're ones that are off weird parts of your head. And for me, when guys start getting knocked out, when they get hit kind of at the front of their head, normally on the side, it's never a great look going forward. But the great news for Gamrod is this is really just a chin check of a fight for him. Gamrod is quite a bit better than Scott Holtzman, technically, in really every aspect of MMA. The one thing I don't like about Gamrod is that if you, me, and Daniel Carmier all know that when he's southpaw, he likes to grapple, and when he's orthodox, he likes to strike, you can't beat guys in the top 15 like that. They're going to be able to expose that hole in your game and they're just going to force you into becoming an orthodox fighter and make you strike they're just going to kick your back leg like there's no tomorrow but against Holtzman he has good boxing but my problem is people love to say Scott Holtzman has good boxing he has good power in his hands and he has good hands if you have good boxing it means that defensively you should be somewhat sound and my issue with Scott Holtzman is he's a very hittable fighter and I know a lot of you guys are probably going to say oh well you're just looking at their at the Dariush fight that's not true even go back to the Dunkyung Ma fight Don Kyung Ma is not a great MMA fighter. He did not have the best of UFC the fights. Maestro. He has some entertaining fights, but he didn't have the most memorable UFC career. He dropped Scott Holtzman, and then, of course, Scott Holtzman was able to come back and knock him out pretty quick after. But the fact that you're getting into those crazy wars with guys who are no longer in the UFC, it's a little bit concerning. Do I think Gamrot could go out there and just out-wrestle Scott Holtzman? I do. But the thing about Gamrot is, let's say he does start to land a few shots on Scott Holtzman. Holtzman, he is in the best defensively. You can land on him then Gamrot might get too much confidence 
confidence as a striker and once that happens that's going to open up the counter strikes of scott holzman to really play a factor in this fight i don't think it will get to that point i just think it is an interesting wrinkle that if game rats landing early it might not be the best sign for him just overall in the fight personally if you look at what game rats able to do the ability to go for takedowns on either side on either leg single legs double legs he can take you down from the clinch and the it's not just the way that he chain wrestles. It's really important. He doesn't even stop wrestling once he gets the fight to the mat. Once he gets the fight to the mat, he's really good at control as well. So it's really hard to pop back up against him. Yes, some guys are able to just muscle their way to the feet. But the issue is, if you do that once, if you do that twice, you're going to be spent by that second and third round. And if Gamerat could just stick to the wrestling early on in this, I don't really know how Holtzman's going to win. If you look at it for Scott Holtzman, he was a Jim O guy for the longest time. He's now out of the MMA lab. And if you go look at it on the Instagrams, John McDessie, James Nakashima with one championship. You got David Mashad with PFL, Bellator, UFC, all over the place. Benson Henderson. But the one guy that I love in Scott Holtzman's corner, and I'm not joking, is Magic Mike Hamill. And if you know anything about Mike Hamill, well, he had a split decision loss to Adam Borch that I thought he won. He also fought his tail off against Usman Nurmagomedov and got beat pillar to post. But he's tough as nails. And to train with a guy like that for Scott Holtzman, I do like it. I he's mean, got Augusto Mendez, his BJJ coach there too, as the good as they side, get. If you're going to talk about those training partners, Gamrod spent this training camp at American Top Team. So Who, he's he's been an American Top Team guy for a while. Let's go through the pictures. Masvidal, Poirier, <laughs> Tiago Moises, uh, Chris Reeve that we have on this card. We also have Barboza and Kyle Dake. Matt, what does Kyle do well? jiu-jitsu no he just beat uh jordan burroughs at wrestling that was a really big deal there you so go. I don't yeah there, there's a lot of good things to like out of both these guys but again really like mateus gamrod in this fight if we have a look at the odds matt i mean not all that surprising although again you look at it for gamrod he did lose his debut but he is a decent sized favorite in this one he's about a minus 225 or thereabouts for scott holtzman about a plus 185 and if we look at the total topology votes 1078 of them 85 percent gamrod 74 percent by decision I like Poland's Mateusz Gamrot in this one. So I guess we both have Gamrot. I'll just end it on this. Do you think we will see Gamrot ever go to 145 in the UFC? Or do you no, think he's, he's just he's Shred back? City at 55. I, I we're we're I staying just, there. I was just going to get your opinion. There we go. Yeah, no, I like Gamrot a lot. In this. Terrible question. Both going with Poland's Mateusz Gamrot to get the win. I love the fight, though. Hot sauce always oh, yeah. brings it. Whether you're Jim Miller or Dun Hyun Ma or even Benil Dariush. We'll see how he rebounds off that loss. Off camp change. But... Again, I like Gamer Gamrod in this one. Should be a great fight. We got a great card. 15 fights. What's not to love? You got Marvin Vittori taking on Kevin Holland in the main event. Just keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, Matt. As we always say, let's get into 